I won't make your way to the cheese if you're driving. <laughs> okay, there you go. You're loyal. I uh, never get rid of you. Never get rid of you. I don't want to get out of what you hurt. I don't want to hurt you. Let me, just put, let me put this over here. All right, that's good. <clears throat> All right, Rabotai. Amud Rishon is tricky. Amud Shini is untricky. So let's see where we are. We're almost done, Rabotai. So we're starting uh, on Kufiud. Gemara Ketubot Daf Kufiud. Our Masek has been dedicated by Mr. Elliot Chasha on honor of his wife Esther. And that's the Ha. We start the new daf kufiyud right on top of the amud. Matni tin mishnah hamotzi shtar chov al chaveros. So a guy pulls out a shtar chov. The event tells Shimon basically you owe me money, and now he's saying I want you to repay me. Vehala hotzi, and um, the other Shimon takes a shtar mechira. Shtar mechira is a, a shtar of sale. Shemachar lo. Now, what are you talking about? After you're claiming that the uh, the debt was due, uh, you sold me a uh, a field. And therefore, uh, we have over here that she says on top, uh, So the Shimon pulls out a star of sale after the loan was due, supposedly. Your star event that you're claiming that I owe you money is either forged or parua or was paid already. Because if I was hayab, if I was um, uh, uh, obligated, lo hayita mochedli etasadeh. Why would you sell me uh, uh, your field? Sheya lechal lekbot tchoka. What are you selling me? You should, you should have just taken the money. <laughs> if I owed you the money, what, what are you selling me a field for? So that's an indication that. Really, I didn't owe you any money. So therefore, Admon Omer, Yachol Hu Lomar, the Love, is able to say that the star again, that you pulled out against me, Reuven, your star is Mezuyaf, or it's paid, Ilu Haiti Hayab Lecha, because if indeed I was Hayab, Hayab Lecha Neparat Shilcha, Kishemachar Tali Eta Sadeh, which means you would not have sold me the field at a time where I owe you money, you're selling me a field, for I owe you money. You should have just taken the money without selling the field. The fact that you're selling a field must indicate that I didn't owe you any money. So that's a, a sign. Achamim omrim, achamim say no. Se haya pikeya. Actually, Reuven was a pikeya. He was actually clever. Shemachad lo etakarka. Because he sold them a field. Why? Because now we can take the field back as a collateral, which means before this guy, Reuven, sold the field, he was worried that maybe Shimon's going to hide his assets. That it's one type of asset you can't hide, and that's real estate. And therefore, Reuven was concerned, I'm going to come back to Shimon and ask to get paid. He says, I'm sorry, I don't have any assets. So what do you do? We sold him a field. Once he sold him the field, then he comes and says, okay, now pay me back. And he can't say, I don't have any assets. We're talking about, I just sold your field. I know exactly where it is. And therefore... That she says the fish Shimon would be able to hide his assets. He would never, he would never place the event to, to take his payment back. So you told the karka, but now we can take the karka. So the Gemara comes and says, "My ta'ama the rabbanan." What's the reason of the rabbanan shapir ka'amar admon? I mean, Admon has a good claim. Basically, if 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 the Uven actually is owed money, why would he be selling him a field? <clears throat> why, why would he be selling him a, a field just to take the money from him? <clears throat> from the fact that he's selling him a field, sounds like that actually uh, that shtar may be forged or maybe paid already. Then wh wh why would he have to sell him a field? Give him the money for nothing. You owe me the money. Why would I give you a field and get paid? He should get paid because he's owed the money. So the Gemara says, There was a certain minhag in certain places where they would actually pay first and then they would write the shtar. Interesting, when you're buying a property, different different customs. So one custom was you pay. You pay the money. 
And after the money is paid, right. then you write up the start. So in that case, everybody agrees, <coughs> which means there's no mahloket. The matzi amarle that um, um, the, uh, uh, the, um, he, he, the Shimon can tell the Uben, which is once, 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 once you, once I gave you the money, that's it. You have the money. What did you sell the field for? You got paid back. In the case where they give the money first, then everybody agrees that the claim at one is correct. We could come along and say, I gave you the money. Why would you give me the field? You didn't have to give me the field. The money was given over already. And then you should have taken it as payment for the loan. Everybody will agree in that case. However, keep it The Mahlokan is in the case where the customer was to write a star first. And after they write the star, so therefore it's binding. So then they're ready. They pay the money. Admon Sabar. So Admon comes along and says, well, once he wrote the star, that already is a proof to Shimon that he's not high of any money. And therefore, he cannot come over and say, no, I sold it to you only in order to get a collateral. Why? Because when you wrote that star, you should have also included what's called the moda'a. Moda'a means you should have told two people at least that, listen, I'm only doing this in order to get my, 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 my debt back. The fact that you didn't clarify it at the time, that indicates that you were selling it and there was no debt over here at all. If there was a debt, you should have specified at the time of giving the star that you're doing it in order to uh, 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 to, to, to just get him get him a property so you can take it back. Rabbanan Sabri, Rabbanan said, no, that's not an option. Why? Habra, habra, itle. People have friends, and your friend has a friend. Habra, habra, and the friend of your friend, habra, itle has a friend as well. And therefore, that's not an option for him to go tell two people what his intention is, because if he would have done that, then Shimon would not have bought in the field. Because what ends up happening? People talk. And people say, oh, yeah, yeah, what's going on? He's selling him the field so he can take it back. Uh, don't tell anybody. Why don't you tell somebody not to tell anybody? Why anybody goes to tell the next guy? And keep it a secret. Before you know it, it'll get back to Shimon. And therefore, Rabbanan say that even if you wrote the star first, he can have a claim and say, the reason why I didn't tell anybody about it is because I didn't want it to get around. And therefore, my intention really was just to give him the field so I could take it back as a result of the loan. Admon says no. Admon says, he doesn't go with the seven of Habra Habra. And then he just says, if indeed you were doing it for that intention, you should have uh, given a moda'a. The fact that you didn't give a moda'a must be you actually sold it and there was no outstanding debt over here. And that is the case of the uh, Maha Lo Kit. Okay, Rabotai, now we move on to the next Mishnah. Uh, okay, case number two. We have a case now with two people, the Uven and Shimon, both pull out Shtarot against each other. Uven says to Shimon, you owe me money. Shimon tells the Uven, you owe me money uh, also over here. Fine. So basically, they both have uh, uh, claims on each other. So Admon comes along and says that Shimon is able to tell the Uven. What are you talking about? If I was actually Hayab, as you're saying, the Uven, that I'm Hayab to pay you, why did you borrow money me, money for me afterwards? That means the Uven's uh, the, the, the Uven borrowed money uh, 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 after uh, after Shimon. So therefore, Shimon is able to come along and say again uh, to the Uven, if indeed it's as if you're saying that I owe you money because uh, you start, you have a start. So why did you borrow from me uh, at a later date? Uh, if I owe you money, why are you borrowing from me? I owe you money. Ella must be that it's a forge. And therefore, I don't owe you anything. That's the shita of Admon. Basically, the two legal stars. Let Reuven pay Shimon and let Shimon pay Reuven. The start of Reuven is uh, uh, early, is written earlier, uh, uh, and then what? And and Shimon is written later. Shimon can tell Reuven. Ilu 
כדברי שטרקה, כיצד אתה לווה ממני? Why did you borrow from me? If I owe you, why did you borrow from me at a later date? אחרי כן, היה לך לבוא את חוקה, you should have said pay me. Why are you borrowing money if I owe you? Then for Shimon can have that claim to the woman and say, jump in the lake. The fact that you came to borrow money from me, that shows you I don't owe you anything. You should have just taken your money back. And Achamim say no. Zeh goveh vezeh goveh. Afidu achom shaveh. Even if it's an equal amount. 500-500, let's say. Eno min ya'akev zeh malveh shlachamino v'shu malveh shelvau. Which we don't say, well, it's a push. I owe you 500, you owe me 500. The Gemara actually will say that we nafka minot to make each guy pay. You'll see it's, it's going to be a, a situation over here. I would have said, well, Ruben says you owe me 500. Shimon says you owe me 500. I would just say, okay, cancel. It's an offset. But uh, she says, we don't do that. We actually go to Bedin and make them take the payment from each other. We'll see exactly why that is the case. Okay, now we go to the Gemara. The Gemara is going to explain this Mishnah. Itman, we have a statement. Shenayim shuotzi ushtar chov ze al ze. Our case of the Mishnah. Reuven pulls the start against Shimon. Shimon pulls the start against <coughs> Reuven. Rav Nachman Amar Ze Gove Ve Ze Gove. So Rav Nachman says what? Ze Gove Ve Ze Gove. Sounds like both starot are legitimate. Each one collects from the other. Rav Sheshat Amar. Rav Sheshat says, Hafuche Matarta Lamali. What do you need to just switch uh, 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 weights that are equal? Hey, what, just go on. You're going through the motions? Okay, you take the 500, I give me back the 500. You don't got to go through the motions. Everybody keep what they had. And Shalom uh, Yisrael. She says, Guys uh, carrying two, let's say, uh, uh, pieces of leather. And they equal the same weight. So he's not going to switch hands. If it's this, normally when you have something different weight, so you, you switch hand, because you know, the right hand, let's say, is stronger. But if it's the same weight, what's the purpose to switch hands to the right, to the left, after the right? It's it's, it's, it's it's futile. So therefore, according to the Pshishat, he's saying, what do you just have to switch hands? You give me the 500, I'll give it to you back. Yeah, but I said, now we get to the Mahlokan over here. Everybody will be Ben Rav Shishat. Ben Rav Nachman, that's called the Alman, this Gemara. Idit ve'idit. בנונית בנונית זבורית זבורית ודאי הפוכה מתר תהו. Let's say both the Uven and Shimon have equal properties. They both have Idi Edit, which is the highest property, or they both have Benunit, which is the middle property, or they both have Zibunit. So therefore, they both have the equal fields. So therefore, why do I got to give you the Zibunit to get it back, or give you the Benunit to get it back, or the Edit to get it back? If all things are equal, everybody will agree, even uh, uh, Rav Nachman, that הפוכה מתר so where's the mahloket going to uh, be? They don't have the same amount of fields. One has uh, Benunit, which is middle field, and one has Ziburit. Now, Rav Nachman Sabat, Zegobe, Bezegobe. Let each one pay each other. Why? So let me explain you what that means when, when we say Gebara. Normally, we have a law that says that when you're a Balhov, which level field are you allowed to collect from? The law is Balhov Govebe Benunit. He collects from the middle field. Now, the question is what is considered a middle grade field? How do you judge it? So, they pointed up Nachman, he holds it is relative. It is relative not to the world, but relative to your fields, which means we look at your portfolio and we see what you have. And therefore, no, if it's only one, so then we have to look at the field on its own. But when you have, let's say, two fields already, so now already it's a relative benoni based on what the person has. So now let's see exactly the case. The case is talking about over here where one guy had benoni and one guy had ziburi. Let's say Uven and Shimon. So now, ziburi, the guy who's got the ziburi, what does he do? Gabele He will take benoni field. Okay, let's say Uven will go to Shimon. And Shimon has Benunit. So what does he do? That's yes. the only thing that he has. Like you said, he only has Benunit. That's what he can pay. Now, uh, 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 the Uven takes Shimon's Benunit. Mm -hmm. Now, what does he have, the Uven? He has Benunit and yes. Ziburit. Now, once you have Benunit and Ziburit, the Benunit becomes Edit, because that's your yes. best field. Yes. That's your, and then your Ziburit now becomes the Benunit. So therefore, what's Shimon going to end up getting paid? Ziburit. 
So therefore, there will be enough kamina in paying each other. But since they have different grades of fields, and it's a relative uh, benoni, so the woman's going to get a benoni field, she was only going to get a ziburit field. As the Gabriel says, ati ba'al ziburit, begabele le benoni. The guy that got the ziburit field, he'll pull the benoni field from the other guy. However, the habi, the habi gabe edit. Now that benoni field turns into edit. The ata hu veshakil ziburit. And the other guy, the woman's going to end up taking what? The ziburit field, because he can't take the benoni field. That the other one took. Why? Because that bit of each field now is a deed. And then once it's a deed, he can only take these. So there is enough coming now by switching. It's not just like, you know, okay, what's the, the difference? Uh, the type. Right. Because we're talking about over they have different types of field. Now, let's, now let's talk about Rav Sheshat. Rav Sheshat, Amar, Hafuchem Matarti Lambani. He said, what are you just, what are you doing over here? Katsabar, Beshel Kol Adam and Shamin. He holds, it's not relative. It's not relative a Benunit field. A Benunit field is whatever the world judges as Benunit field, not regarding your portfolio. So, so, kiatehi Benunit and Abshe Kashaki. So, what's going to happen? The first guy has Benunit. So, what is that? He's going to take the Benunit. What's the other guy going to do? Take it back. And therefore, and therefore, that's the Mahalotin of Abshe Shat and Rab Nachman. How do you look at a Benunit field? Is it relative? To the person's own portfolio, or is it fixed according to the world standard? And the Nafkamina is going to be where they have different uh, fields. One has a Benunit, one has a Zimurit. Nafkamina is going to be uh, uh, in, in such a case. So the Gabbara comes along and says, Wait, or Rab Nachman, according to Rab Nachman, my Hazi Ta'ate Ba'al Zimurit Beresha, which is what, what do you say? You said the Zimurit guy takes the Benunit field first. And therefore, what's going to end up happening? The other guy is going to get, uh, 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 not going to be able to take the Benoni because that becomes your AD. And he's going to have to take the Zibonit field. Why do you start with him? Why do you start that the Zibonit guy takes the Benoni field first? Start, start the other way. Let the Benoni guy come and let him take the uh, Zibonit, which means, and then let him what? Let him. Let him take it back. Let's read that again. My Hazita Why did you say that? What? That the Ba'al Zibuni goes first and what? And he'll benefit. Why is he benefiting? Because he's basically getting a Benoni field. Why, why, why do you make him go first? Let the Benoni, let the Ba'al Benoni Beresha and let him take the Zibuni. And the other guy will get uh, 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 now. Uh, 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 uh. now. Now, what does he have? He has a Benoni, Benigmi Zibuni. And therefore, now the Baal Benunit will take first from the Ziburi. And then uh, 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 the other guy uh, will take uh, uh, his, his uh, uh, right, he'll take Ziburi back, which is bottom line. By starting it one way, you're giving one guy the advantage over the other. Start it the other way, and the other guy gets the advantage. So, why go first to that? Exactly. Okay. How are you going to decide? Somebody over here is going to get an advantage yes. of getting a better field than the other one, mm -hmm. depending where you start. So the government saying, why are you starting? Wait, 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 wait. One of the ways they're even. The other way there's an advantage. No. According to Rab Nachman, my Hazita te Ba'al Ziburi Beresha. Let's review Rab Nachman. Rab Nachman was the Ba'al Ziburi Beresha. He had Ziburi, so he's going to take Benonit. Correct. So he got an advantage. He got Benonit field. Now the other guy Shimon, where is he going to end up taking from him? He cannot take the Benonit. The Benunit is able, he's going to end up taking Ziburit. Okay, so you say, well, so therefore, one got an advantage over the other. One got Ziburit and one got uh, uh, Benunit. So the government says, why, why, why do you start it that way? Start the other way. Let the Benunit guy start. The guy who has the Benunit field. Let him take the Ziburit. So therefore, he comes now and gets Ziburit. And now, what's the other guy going to end up getting? Also Ziburit. Because bottom line, when he takes it back, it's also a relative uh, uh, Benunit. So they're equal. So they go, why did you make it that they get an advantage when you can really make it that everybody's going to get the same quality? So the Gemara says, oh, you're right. If 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 if, 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 if you're definitely right, but Lord Sadiq, you know the case is talking about the Kadim Tabe'e. Strange. <laughs> the Gemara says that the Ba'al Zimuri came to court first, and his claim was 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 given first. So there's a reason why we're letting the Ba'al Zimuri take the Benoni field, because he, he, he came first over there, and therefore uh, he, he benefits. 
But the Gemara says, I don't understand. He can't. What was the first come, first serve? Soft, soft. Ki atu the megbeba. This is that guy that atu. Bottom line, at the time of payment, they're, they're the same time. Which is what happened when 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 the first guy came, the Baal uh, the Baal uh, Ziburit. Then the Baal Bidurit came and said, "Hold it, he owes me money." And at the time of payment, yeah, bottom line, they're the same. So then, why do you start with the, the Baal Ziburit more than the Baal Bidurit? So the Gemara says, "You're right. Uh, good, uh, uh, good question." So therefore, the Gemara explains the Mahloka differently. Again, we're trying to explain the Mahloka between Rav Nachman and Rav Shisha. Two guys have claims against each other. You owe me, no, uh, you owe me. What does Rav Nachman say? Switch. You pay him, you pay him. And what does Rav Shisha say? No, no, no. Well, it's equal. Just call it, call it a day. It offsets. What's the Mahloka? Ela lo la tzedicha di itle had iditu benonit. Really, we're talking about one guy has idit and benonit. Vi itle le had ziburi. And the other guy only has Ziburi. So we're changing the case. Mor Sabah, Rav Nachman holds what? Bishelo hen Shamin. And therefore, Bishelo hen Shamin, it's a, it's a relative uh, assessment over there. <coughs> and therefore, when the guy has uh, a deep uh, 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 um oh, so there, yeah, so when he, when he has a deep Ubenonit, when we say Zegobe ve Zegobe, He'll actually take Benonit. Because if the guy has Edith and Ziburit, what, what does he have over here? If he has Edith and, if he has Edith and Benonit, I'm sorry. So the Edith is Edith, and the Benonit is Benonit. So he'll take actually a uh, Benonit. And therefore, what? And what's going to happen? When you can take the other one, he's all going to take Ziburit. Let, let's speak it out. Let's read the Rashi over here. When Rashi says, Elo de Sadiqa, Rashi says, that she says over here in the Bura Matheel. Sof, sof, okay. More so, so, Shami. Velava Pukhim Matartahu. The Meman of Sheikh Ikarabha, the Baal Ziburit. Which means, in this case over here, the guy who has the Ziburit, no matter how you start it, is always going to benefit. Get, get the case. One guy's got an Edith and a Benoni, and the other guy's got just a Ziburit. So, no matter how you start it, let's speak it out. The Ziburit goes first. What is he going to get? A Benoni. Okay, so he gets a Benoni. Yeah. Now, what, is, what, is, what, is, what does he end up happening? He has now a Benoni and a Ziburit. The other guy's going to only take a Ziburit. Yeah. Good. Now let's go the other way. If you start the other way, what, what is the guy going to get first? He's only going to get a, a, a Ziburit. And therefore, what does he have now in his, in his portfolio? A deep Benoni and Ziburit. Yeah. The other guy's going to take the Benoni regardless. So, therefore, no matter how you uh, turn it around, uh, turn it around the guy with the Ziburit is always going to benefit. He's always going to end up with a Benunit field, and the other guy is always going to end up with a Ziburit field. Yeah. So that's the case that we are talking uh, about. And the Gemara says, Umar Sabah Beshil Kol Adam in Shamin. But according to Rav Cheshat, he says, no, it's not a relative assessment. It's a world assessment. Therefore, a Benunit is a Benunit no matter where it is. So bottom line, he'll take the Benunit, he'll take it back. And therefore, that's why Hafuchem Batarta Lama Li. Uh, so Gabarak comes along and says, now that you say Rav Sheshat, we're going to ask a question on Rav Sheshat. What's Rav Sheshat's a, a, opinion again, Nabotai? Hafuchem matarta lambali. What do you have to switch hands for? It's all uh, it's all the same. Right, you're going to break even anyway. So Gabarak mm -hmm. says, Tenan, here but we have a problem. Vahachamim omrim zegove vezegove. I mean, Rav Sheshat, you're going, against, you're going against the rabbis of the Mishnah. What did the rabbis of the Mishnah say? Reuven says, you owe me money. Shimon says, you owe me money. What do we say? Zegobe vezegobe. Which sounds like you switch monies. According to Rav Sheshad, Adraba hapuchem matabta lamali. So how does he learn the Mishnah? Targema Rav Nachman alibad Rav Sheshad. Look how intellectually honest Rav Nachman was. Rav Nachman explains the Mishnah for Rav Sheshad. Even though he's arguing on Rav Sheshad, but he says, listen, that's, a, that's an easy question. I can answer for Rav Sheshad. Kegon, shelava ze le'aesed Okay, the, the, the due dates were not at the same time. That means one debt was due after five years and one was after 10. So therefore, you cannot come along and say uh, that what? That, that let it be a push. What do you mean let it be a push? The guy's money is due now. So therefore, we're talking about two shtarot that the due dates are at a different time. So they're, they're, they're not at the same time. So you can't just come along and say, okay, it's a push. Where's it's a push. I got five more years. And therefore... That's what the Mishnah said, Zegove, Zegove. The Gabbard says, hold it. Echi dame. What's the case? Let's say Shimon borrowed for 10 years. 
ושני, let's say, לאובן, לחמש, for five years. Fine. <coughs> and now what happens? It, before the ten years are up, now they're coming to Bedin. Admon. Let's go back to Admon's opinion. What is Admon's opinion? What was Edmond's claim? Yeah. If I owed you money, why would you borrow from me? Hold it. I don't owe you money yet. It's still five, I still have five more years. Yeah. That's not a claim. What was Edmond's whole claim? Edmond's whole claim was that Shimon could tell the Uven, the Uven, you say I owe you money? If I owe you money, why did you come borrow from me? You should have just taken the money back. Why are you borrowing from me? But wait, <laughs> if Shimon doesn't owe the money yet, Oh, if Shimon doesn't know the money yet, that's why. Uh, uh, if Reuven doesn't owe the uh, the money yet, so that's why he's borrowing. So we, 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 what does one thing have to do with the other? So therefore, again, would Edmond say in such a case that Shimon can tell Reuven, if I was obligated to you, how are you borrowing me? Which means <laughs> Shimon's loan did not come. Come do yet, mm-hmm. and therefore he needs to borrow the money. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't get money it, it, because uh, he, he wasn't able to collect the money from uh, uh, Shimon yet. Understand what happened? Shimon's loan is not due till later on. So the Reuven has to borrow money from Shimon. So he's like, "Oh, what do you mean? If, 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 if I owe you money, why would you come and borrow from me? Why would I come to borrow from you? Because your debt is not due yet. That's why I need to borrow from you. <laughs> What's one thing I do with the other? So therefore, Ella <clears throat> must mm-hmm. be talking about the Shon." So there must be the case of talking about that Shimon's loan is five years and the second loan is ten. That means what? That when the Uven comes mean? along, already Shimon's debt is due already. And that's why Edmon can have a claim. That means when, when, when the Uven comes to Shimon, already Shimon's debt is due. It's five years already. He's the one that owes him five years. So therefore, in that case, the Uven, uh, uh, in that case, Shimon can tell Levi, uh, uh, the Uven, hold it. If your star is a real star, why are you lending for me? I owe you money at this point. Ela must be your star at Mizuya. It's because Shimon's loan was due already at five years when the Uven came to borrow. And therefore, Shimon is the five year uh, note and the Uven is the 10 year note. Odpam. The Uven comes to Shimon. When does he come to Shimon? After five years. And he comes along and says, Lend me money. Yeah. <laughs> so Shimon can come along and say, Wish you lend me money. And then he said, Pay me. I, 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 have, a, I, have, a, I have a note. What are you talking about? That note is for why, why would you borrow money from me if I owe you already? And therefore, th- 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 that's the case you have to say in the Mishnah. So the Gemara comes along and says, wait, wait, wait. What's the case? Mm-hmm. If already the first loan was up, meaning that what Shimon owes the money, the five years is up already. And then what? Then the Uven went and borrowed money from Shimon. And now the Uven is going to come along and say he wants his money back, which means that Shimon could come along and uh, take out the start that says what? That uh, uh, he could say, I'm not high of anything over here. Because you, 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 if the loan was due already, so therefore, the Uvin still has a claim. I'm sorry, Shimon still has a claim. Shimon uh, uh, borrowed money for, uh, 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 the Uvin borrowed money for five years. Good? Yeah. And therefore what? Now the five years are up. The five years are up, now the Uvin comes to borrow money from Shimon. If that's the case, Shimon definitely could say, hold it. I owe you money already, according to you. Why would you borrow money if I owe you money? So that cannot be the case. That means Edmond's m- m- makes perfect sense. My tamad rabbanan. What's the reason of the of the rabbis? Od pam. Edmond makes sense if the loan is due already. Shimon can always say, "Why are you borrowing money if I owe you money?" What would be the logic of the rabbis? If the loan was due already. Shimon has a good claim. Why are you borrowing money from me if I owe you? The Gemara says, ah, the Oh, you know what you're going to tell me? The time didn't come yet. Wait, so if the time didn't come yet, if the, if the loan, let's say, it, it's before five years. So it's before five years, Shimon does not have a claim to say, why are you borrowing? I'm borrowing because the, 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 the loan is not due yet. That's why I'm borrowing. So we really don't have the case. What is the scenario that one is five years and one is 10 years Either way, you're going to learn the case. It doesn't make sense. Either Admon or Hakamim. So the Gemara says, La Okay. When did uh, uh, the Uven uh, uh, come over here? He came to borrow money on the last day. 
on the last day that the loan was due. That means what? It should on uh, borrowed money uh, uh, for five years. Beautiful. Uh, four years and 364 days. And the last day, you know, event comes to borrow money. Now the question is like this. More sabbat. I mean, it's via Zeev, the Yomeh. That can mean come along and say that what? That a person uh, uh, borrows money for one day, even though tomorrow he's not going to need it. And more sabbat, and what is it, Monho? No, I mean, it is the Azif the Yomeh. A guy doesn't borrow for a day. I'll explain to you exactly what's going on over here. A guy knows he's getting paid tomorrow with that. He's going to go borrow from that guy today. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that's what Edmond says. Edmond says, no you know you're getting paid tomorrow. Why are you borrowing money? Just wait, wait, wait a day. And that's why he says, Shimon can come along and say, if you borrow for me today, that means your start is Mizuya. My Sheikh and Hakamim say, no. Bottom one guy needs the money today. Tomorrow is a different day. And therefore, they go there, they go there. That, that's the model. Okay, what's the nature of a person when there's one day left to the, uh, to, 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 to the debt? Will a person go borrow on that day? How can you say he will? What does it help me, Hakamim say? Today is Tuesday. I need the money today. I'm, you're going to get paid tomorrow. Tomorrow, I, mean, I, I need the business today. I need the money today to pay to pay something. What's going to help tomorrow? Tomorrow, you put me in jail. So therefore, Hakamim say, I, I, what does Edmond say? Eh, for one day, he'll work it out. He'll tell the guy, come back tomorrow. I'll have more money tomorrow. I'm not going lending, b- borrowing money now, right? A whole start for something that I'm going to get paid tomorrow. So that's the old Mahlokan over here. When the guy came on the last day, how do we look at the case? Rami bar Hama Amar. Okay, new answer. New answer, Rabotai. Now we have a different way. Okay, let's let's review what we're, we're doing over here, Rabotai. We have a shita of Rav Shesha. Rav Shesha said what? That hafuche, hafuche matarta lamali. What do you got to swap for? He owes five hundred. He owes five hundred. It's a, it's an offset. Well, we said, what do you mean? But the Mishnah said zego veve zego ve. They must be. So, <laughs> and that's the Shittab HaKamim. So, the Shittab is an Amora. I cannot argue on the Shittab HaKamim. So, the first answer we gave, no, it's so by the way, one star is, 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 is longer than the other. And he came on the last day. And, they, and that's the whole Mahlogar over here. Since he came on the last day, HaKamim come along and say, he does owe the money uh, because the person uh, does borrow for one day. And then for Zegobe, Zegobe, you, you, you collect uh, 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 both of them. And uh, the other rabbi says, no. And Mot says, no, you don't collect both of them because nobody does that. Therefore, that's a sign that he never borrowed the original money. Right. New answer. New answer. One of the sides over here, we learned, what are the two stadim in the Mishnah? The Uven and Shimon. Now we're saying, no, it's not the Uven and Shimon. It's the Uven and the Yitomim of Shimon. One of the stadim over here is actually the the children over here. And they, it's what, what's happening. The children are trying to come collect the debt yeah. of their father. The Yatme Nigba Gaber. Rule of Yatumim is they could collect. However, Agbuye Log Minan Minayu. However, we don't collect from the Yorshim the Chobot that their father was obligated unless he left them Karka. And we're talking about a way that these Yatumim do not have Karka. And therefore, that the other side can take. So that's why the Achamim uh, 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 said in the Mishnah uh, that what? And, and then that's why the Achamim did not say that each guy keeps keep, keep keeps their item. You, you can't keep their item. Achamim cannot say in the Mishnah that it offsets. No, it doesn't offset. The Yitomim are going to get paid, yeah. and then the guys are not. Achamim could not say, everybody keep your stuff. No, 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 keep your stuff. In this case, over here, you two have an advantage. But give us wait. They had Zegobe Vizegobe Ketani. But the Achimim didn't say Zegobe Vize Enogove, which sounds like the Yatumim collect and the other guy doesn't. It says Zegobe Vizegobe. It sounds like both sides are collecting. What do you mean? If it's Yatumim, it's not so. The other side doesn't collect from the Yatumim. How could Achimim say Zegobe Vize Gobe? So give us said Zegobe. <laughs> Which means they go the Yitomim and go there. And the other guy is not only but in the in the Karka. And therefore, since the Yitomim don't have Karka, he cannot get until the dollar means. Now the Gabbana comes along and says, No, what are you talking about? First of all, I have two problems with the way you're learning the Mishnah. 
Amar Rava. Shtei Teshuvot Madamar. I have two refutations on what you just said. Hada de Zegobe ve Zegobe Ketani. First of all, it says Zegobe ve Zegobe. So don't tell me with your thumbs. No, I mean Zegobe ve Zera Uyling Bot. Come on, that's Doha. It says Zegobe ve Zegobe. So, 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 so do, do me a favor. The odd, like Binu Ara Liyatme. So the Gabbara comes along and says, <laughs> There's a simple fix for that. Let Shimon pay the Yitomim back in Karka and then what? Take it back. What's the whole reason we said? Because in Karka you can collect. Exactly. So then we, we have a scenario of Zegobe and Zegobe. Let, 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 let Shimon pay his debt back in Karka. He'll take it back yeah. because he can take it back. Now, how, how do we know you can do such a thing? If you to me collected karka from the death of their father, the Balchov actually can come along and take it. And therefore, why, according to Rabbi Sheshad, the Nachamim say that uh, uh, the two sides are uh, uh, Gobim? We should just say what? Everybody just stay put. Which means, bottom line, why do I have to give the car and take it back? Just stay put. It's a fuchim matarta. Because that's what I've just said, home. But how can we don't say that? If it's like you're learning Yetomim, first of all, it says Zegobe Vezegobe. So you can't tell me, no, Zegobe Vezera Uidegbo. No, Zegobe Vezegobe. And if that's the case, why should it be Zegobe Vezegobe? Because, bottom line, what are you telling you? You give the car and take it back. Why would I mean say? If it's a Tomim case, they go there, they go there. You know, the Gemara answers this question. Kasha. It's actually a good question, which is the answer of Rami Barhama that wants to answer the Mishnah Kotra Sheshat that we're talking about Yetumim is actually Kash. Yeah, it is Difa Kalt. Very good. Now the Gemara comes along and says, one more point before we finish the Sugiya. No, maybe we can answer it. Really, we're talking about Yetumim. I will give the case like this. There we go. The Yetomim have Ziburit. And the other guy, Shimon, let's say, had Edit Ubenonit. Now what's going to happen? The Azli Yatme Gavu Benonit. Okay, that's very good. The Yetomim, they come along and they take Benonit because that's the law. They take Benonit. And what? And then Shimon will only take back inferior, only take back the body. Now, why? Even if you're going to come along and say that it's not a relative Benunit, it goes according to the, to the world. Uh, we have a rule. Yetumim always pay Ziburit. Which is, what, what did the Yetumim have? They had Ziburit. And now what happened? And now they took back a Benonit. Oh, he cannot take the Benonit. Even Benonit, if you go according to the world standard of Benonit, because Halakha says, Yetumim, whenever they pay back their father's debt, they only pay back Ziburit. And therefore, even according to Lab Shesha, we understand why Zegobim is Zegobim, because it's different payments. Shimon is only going to get Ziburit, and the Yetumim are going to get Benonit. Lachen, it says in the Mishnah, Zegobe Vezegobe, because it's not Hafuchem Matarta. Or Pam, Rab Shesha. But they don't have a land. No, no, they do. That's the case. Yeah, they have a land. They have a Ziburi. Yes, I'm Ziburi. No, the Ashtam Ziburi. And the other guy has Edith and Benonit. So therefore, the Yetumim will collect Benonit. And now, even though you say Benonit Yeshlehem, they still only have to give the Buri, because the law is Yetumim own, because that's the law. The orphans need more money, no? So that's why they don't have to pay the Borit. They pay the cheaper fee. They don't pay the... the, 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 the so, that, so that's why the Banan says they go be they go be because it's a different pay. Exactly. So the Gemara says, wait, uh, wait. Uh, that which we say that the Yetumim only have to pay Ziburi, Hecha de lo Tafis. That's where the Baal Chob didn't grab. However, Rabbi, Hecha de Tafis, Tafas. But if the Baal Chob grabs Benonit, 
מה שהוא גרב, הוא גרב, לא לוקחים את זה ממנו. אם הוא תפס בינונית הבעל חוב מהיתומים, הוא תבט. So therefore, we're talking about over here, in this case over here in Amishnah, the בעל חוב already has the בינונית. כיוון יש בידו הבעל חוב הבינונית שהם רוצים לגבות ממנו, ואז זה כאילו תפס מהם את הבינונית. וואו, which means, the בעל חוב over here we said, has a deed to בינונית. Correct? So what's going to happen over here? He's holding the בינונית already. זה כאילו הוא תופס את זה כבר. What's going to happen? The יתומים are going to take the בינונית. He can say what? I was תופס already the בינונית, because I had it first. So therefore, in such a case over there, you're back to the question. It's a פוחי מטרתה. Why would החמים say זה גובה וזה גובה? In this case, we consider it as if the שמעון was already holding the piece. Why was he holding it? He was holding it first. Don't forget it. The יתומים owe שמעון money? Yes. Yes. Okay, what do they owe him? They owe him Ziburit, because the Yitim only pays Ziburit. But guess what? What's the law if Shimon... Tafas, Tafas. The Ukevat Tafus in the Benonit. Who can't do this in there? So therefore, in that case over there, what should I do? Give it to you, to get it back? I had it already. So in that case over there, we're back to a question. So you can't explain. Maybe you cannot explain it. That's why Nabi Muhammad... That's the only way Chachamim can be explained. The first way. The first way, exactly. You cannot explain it in this way over here, because... It would not make sense why Hakamim would say Zegu Bebe Zegu Bebe. Lama Zegu Bebe Zegu Bebe. This is how we came out today. Hold the Benoni to it. I'll give you the Benoni to take it back. So therefore, the only one scenario for you. So we got to go back to the first answer and we cannot answer according to Rabbi Barahama. All right, the Botai. Now we move on to the next Mishnah. Shalosh Arasot Lenesui. There are three regions in Eretz Yisrael regarding marriage. Let's discuss this outside for a minute. When a person gets married, The big question is, where's the couple going to live? Mm. So therefore, there's a big uh, discussion over here if they have a mahloket, where one couple says, I want to live over here. And she comes, no, no, I want to live in, in, in a different yeah. place over there. So there's, we divide Eretz Israel into basically three regions. And therefore, in these regions, you cannot force one of the spouses to move from one region to a, to a different. What are the three regions? Yehuda, Eber HaYerden, and Galil. And Motsi'in. מעיר לעיר ומקרח לקרח. You cannot force your spouse to move from one city in one region to a different city in a different But region. Different region. Ah. No, no, no. Where I... Well, stop. You have three. You have three different regions over three. here. So now let's say they're coming from this region over here. Both of them from the yes. same region. So you cannot force them okay. to move to a different city or a different krach. Krach is a big city. עוד פעם, אין מוציאים, מכנף מוצאים וייף, to move מעיר לעיר, meaning from one region to a different, או מקרק לקרק in a different region. אבל באותה הארץ, מוציאים מעיר לקרק לקרק. אבל in the same region, the husband could force his wife to move from one city in the same region to a different city, or a big city, קרק לקרק. אבל לא מעיר לקרק ולא מקרק לעיר. You can go from city to city in the same region, or you can go from big city, The big city, but you cannot go from ir to krach or krach to ir. It's both the big or big to small, the same city. Now, that's the first opinion. However, we have another opinion. Motsi'in minaveh hara'a lenaveh hayafa. Amazing. Upgrade. Right? You could go from a bad dwelling to a, you can force her to go to a good dwelling. Avalo minaveh hayafa lenaveh hara'a. But you can't force her to go from a good dwelling to a bad. Aban shumum gamliel omer, af lo minaveh hara'a lenaveh hayafa. Wow. She's happy in the, in, in the bad dwelling and the inferior dwelling. Keep on it. Why? Look at this big hadush of the Mishnah. That new, uh, uh, new uh, uh, neighborhood makes the lady sick. That she says, Top line in that she, Amazing. He moved to a nice fancy new neighborhood. Ah, the food Watch changes. It. Now you start eating fancy foods. Now there's pressure, social yeah, pressure. Nice. Can have it, can avoid. When the guy was living in the, in the, in the, in the, in the simple neighborhood in Mehaj uh, Arim, nobody had anything. There's no stress. There's no worry. Everybody's the anin, anin, anin. Now you move to Erzaliya. Uh, everybody's eating caviar. Everybody's eating special food. You know, you're not used to something. Speaking that language. Everybody has to dress a certain way. Actually, I have a dog on. 
הרבה נחלצים, הרבה דאגה. So therefore you cannot force her. She's I'm comfortable living in the, in the, in the good neighborhood. Leave me alone. I'm not interested in the new neighborhood. Okay, now the Gemara comes along and says, Bishlama mikrach le'ir. We understand where you cannot force her. If she was living in the krach, you cannot force her to go to the ir. Why? The mikrach she hei kol mileh. You have the supermarkets in the krach. You have the chuk in the krach. It's easier for to buy all the groceries in the krach. But if you send it to a city, they don't have, uh, the Eid doesn't have this. The Eid doesn't have this. You don't have all the products. Ela, me Eid le krach my tama. But you're upgrading her. To move her from an Eid to a krach, well, why not? The Bible says, me sayan le debi yosem le bichanina, the mother of yosem le bichanina, me nain shi shibat kirachim kashe. To live in the big cities, it's not so easy on the body. How do we know she ne emad? When the Jewish people came back uh, in the times of Nehemiah, so those Jews that decided to live in Jerusalem, what did the Pasuk say? You know why? Because it's not easy to live in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is a krach. And therefore, it's uh, it takes its toll. And therefore, the fact that they needed a special berakha for those that decided to live in Jerusalem, you see, that even though they have a lot of products, a lot of marketplaces, you cannot force a lady to go from the ir to the krach. Rabban Shemur Gamliel came along and said, even if she comes from a Naveya La'a, from a bad dwelling, you cannot force her to move to a good dwelling. Why? Because the change is going to affect her health. My bodek, when I says, Kedish Shemuel, the Amar, she knew they said, Dechilat Holy Me'ayim, that when you start to change the diet, like I said, now she's going to start eating better foods. What happens? The changing of the diet causes the body to get sick. And therefore, what happens? Digestion. Now, all of a sudden, she has upset stomach. Why? She's not used to these fancy foods. And therefore, you see, Shinui Veset. Where does Shinui Veset begin? Which means a person's cycle changes of the health. It starts It starts in the when, when, when you change your, 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 your eating, eating habits. And therefore, it says, Katum Besefer Ben Sira. Ben Sira was a book of advice. Every day of the poor man's life is bad. The poor man does not have a good day. What do you mean? He has Shabbat Ani. He has Yamim Tovim. What's the matter? What happens on Shabbat? What happens on Shabbat? The Ani eats different foods. And he's not used to eating those foods. So what happens on Shabbat? He has a stomachache the whole Shabbat. So therefore, even on Shabbat, his days are bad. A regular rich guy, he can tolerate the Shabbat food because he's just eating good stuff. But the Ani, during the week, he suffers because in law. The Shabbat, Mashu Ochel, no, Nagil, the Shinui Besset. And therefore, it causes a change in his uh, in his metabolism and his diet. And therefore, what does that cause him? What am I? Yabara says, Ben Sina Omir, Afle Lot. Well, not only the days of the Ani are miserable, but even his nights. That's why it says, Kod Yemir. Call is including even the nights. Now, why are the nights of an Ani miserable? Bishval Gagim Gago. His roof is on a lower place. He cannot build on a high top. He built in a low place. So what happens? All the rain of all the high houses fall on his roof. So he hears the pitter patter of the rain the whole night. So he can't sleep. Furthermore, Karmo. He cannot afford to plant in the valley. So where does he plant? On the on the on the rooftop, on the hills. So what happens? The rain from the other roofs that are higher than him land on his roof. And what happens? Oh, I'm sorry, the, the keramim. He fertilizes his fields. But where is his fields? On high. Yes, the so wind comes down, and blows all the fertilizer yeah. to the fields that are down. Yeah. So Mesquite, yeah. he doesn't even have, uh, he doesn't even have uh, uh, enough uh, uh, benefit over there in such a case. Over there. Therefore, he doesn't lose not only in the day, but Meskid, he loses also at night. Matnitim. Akol ma'alin le'eris Yisrael. Which means, now let's say you have a couple and uh, you want to force them to move to Eris Yisrael. So a, poor, a person who's living in Husla Aris can force his family to say, we are moving to Eris Yisrael. Vezeu. Ve'en akol motzi'im. But if they're living in Eris Yisrael already, he cannot force his family to make Yerida. You can force your family to make Aliyah. But you cannot force them to make Yerida. Wow. 
let's say they're living in Chutz Laaretz, or they're living in a different no, city, Israel, or, or let's say, or let's say they're living in a different city yeah. in Eretz Israel, yeah. you could force them to make Aliyat in Ushalayim. Yeah. You cannot force them to make Yerida from Yerushalayim. Either spouse can force the other one to make this uh, or not make this move. And the Mishnah continues. Nasa Isha Be'eris Yisrael. Let's say a guy married a girl in Israel. Be'gersha Be'eris Yisrael. And he divorced her in Eris Yisrael. Noten na me'me'ot Eris Yisrael. When he pays her the ketubah, which currency does he use? Eris Yisrael currency. Nasa Isha Be'eris Yisrael. Be'gersha Be'kapotkia. But let's say he divorced her in Kapotkia. Noten na me'me'ot Eris Yisrael. It sounds like that the obligation is where you got married and where you obligated yourself. Where do you get married? In Israel. Where do you obligate himself to Ketubah? Mm -hmm. In Israel. So therefore, he only has to pay the currency of Israel, which is not as expensive as Kapotkia. Nasa Isha be Kapotkia. Let's say married in Kapotkia, that's outside of Israel, be Girsha be Eris Israel, and you divorce her in Eris Israel. <clears throat> well, it sounds like it should be Kapotkia, because that's where the yeah, Ayub yeah, was. But it says, no. No tenna me meot Eris Israel. In that case, we go the opposite. We see you only have to pay her. I'm not going to say there's a contradiction over here. Why in this case, when the obligation was in Kapotkia, even though the divorce was in Eretz Israel, why do you pay Eretz Israel currency? We will see. He says, no. The Hayyub was in Kapotkia, therefore you pay it. Even though she got divorced in Israel, you pay Kapotkia money, which is a bigger sum. Everybody agrees. You got married in Kapotkia, you got divorced in Kapotkia, no tenem ma'od Kapotkia. And the Gemara begins. Hakol ma'alim. You could force everybody to move to Eris Israel. Hakol. Who's Hakol? La'atu yemai. Who is it coming to include? La'atu ye abadim. It's coming to include abadim. Let's say you have an Ebed Evri. And the Ebed Evri is in Chutz La'aris. You could force the Ebed Evri to move to Eris Israel. You can force the Ebed Evri. Ulman de Tani Abadim Behedya, but some have this in the Mishnah. Some say it's Beferush. So therefore, if it says Beferush Abadim, La'atu Yemai, what is a call coming to include? La'atu Yemai, Naveha Yafel, Naveha Ra'a. Even if the guy has a beautiful villa in Chutz La'ares, you could force his family to move to a, 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 a an inferior dwelling in Eris Israel. And even if you're moving from a Good place to a bad place, you can force them. The En Akol Motsi'im, which is once they're in Eretz Yisrael, you can't force them to leave. La Atu Yemai, who is that coming to the cruise? It's Akol En Akol Motsi'im. So it says La Atu Yemai, La Atu Ye Ebed Shabarah Mutz La Ares Eretz Yisrael. Let's say, guys, an Ebed Kanani, and his Ebed Kanani ran, escaped from Mutz La Ares and ran to Eretz Yisrael. So now he wants to bring him back. No, he's too stuck. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the Amin and Le, in such a case, we tell the master, sell him in Israel. That's it. Sell him. Sell him to a different guy in Israel. Mishum Yeshivat Eretz Israel. Why? There's a mitzvah to sell him Eretz Israel. Every extra guy we get to come to Eretz Israel, we keep him. And therefore, he loses his Ebed. Now, the Ebed's going to have to compensate him. Ebed Kanani. Ebed Kanani. No, if there be Ibit Kanani in Erset, people will live there because they have Abadim. Nahon. As the Azola Adonim. Is No, no, no. So there's two ways of learning. Some say Shafa Ibit Mehoyaba. Because uh, Evans Hayab is like a lady, and a lady can have a mitzvah yeshiva in Israel. So if you say a lady has an obligation of Israel, no problem. Or you can say, like I said, mitzvah yeshiva is said that there'll be abadim kidanim, and there's people to work, and therefore other people will come and live in Israel. Hakol maalim Yerushalayim. Everybody is uh, uh, you move up to Yerushalayim. That means even if you're living in a different city, you can force them. So it says that to you, what's it coming to include? Even though you have a beautiful villa in Tel Aviv and you're going to move to a, a, an inferior yeah, place in uh, Yerushalayim, even to a lower place. Once you're in once you're in Yerushalayim, you cannot force them. Yeah, but I said, 
אפילו מנבא הרעה לנבא היפה. That even if you're living in a bad place, you don't make them move to a good place. You can't force them <coughs> to move. I mean, obviously, we just said you can move them to a bad place. So if you can move them to a bad place, certainly if they're in a bad place already, you're not going to take them out. <coughs> so the Gemara says, you didn't, need to be, you didn't need to tell me that. Otma, we just said you're allowed to move your family from a, a beautiful villa in Tel Aviv to an inferior place. And it's a, so if you're living in Jerusalem, so if I'm living in an inferior place already, certainly you can't move them. Why does it have to tell me that? In Motsi'im. If I can move them to a bad place, certainly I can't take them out of a bad place. So the Gemara says, but I need the Tanaresha in Motsi'im. It's Aderek Agav. Since in the beginning, the Mishnah said, we said in the Sefa, we didn't have to say that case. Because again, once I told you that, once I told you that that you, you, you could move to a bad place, you, you could force them to move to a bad place, so certainly you can't force them to leave. Uh, 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 that goes without saying. Now we get to Mahlokot between husband and wife. Who He wants to move to Israel or to Jerusalem. She doesn't want to move. You force her. I don't want to go. What happens? He can divorce her and he does not have to pay her. She says she wants to move up to Israel or to Jerusalem. Now we force the husband to go up. He doesn't want. In this case, he divorced somebody. He has to pay the ketubah. He omerit latzit. The Omeret, Shelo that's it. Because now they want to make Yerida. So she comes along and says, I want to leave Eretz Yisrael. And he says, what? I don't, or Jerusalem. Kofin, or Tash, you force Yifosa. And what? We have to say, but look at Tumata. Otherwise she can get the voice without a Ketubah. Who Omer, that's it. The Omeret, Shelo, that's it. She says, no, I don't want to leave Eretz Yisrael. Kofin, or Tash, they force him. And if he doesn't want to listen, we love you, see the Yitain, Ketubah. Nasa Isha. Now we have a question. We learned in the Mishnah, if you get married in Eretz Israel and you get divorced in Eretz Israel, where do you pay the Ketubah according to the currency of Eretz Israel? But then the Mishnah said that if you get married in Eretz Israel and you get divorced in Kapotkia, you pay Eretz Israel. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, 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 I'm sorry, if you got married in, 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 in Kapotkia and you got divorced in Eretz Israel, Israel. You, have, you have a contradiction. Ketani nasa isha Eretz Israel. You got married in Israel. I got the boss What did we say? Why? You go according to where the obligation was. Where was the obligation? Where you got married. And that's Israel. However, if you got married in Kapotkia, it's still Israel. Where the Hayub was in Kapotkia, not Israel. Sounds like you know where the payment is, not where the obligation was. So the Gemara answers, This is a kula of ketubah that will always give the cheaper of the two payments. Why? This opinion holds ketubah is only with Rabbanan. And therefore, since it's with Rabbanan, sometimes it goes after the shi'bud, sometimes it goes after the place where it gets paid. What is it telling you on? What's the cheaper? Because so, Ketubah so, Rabbanan. So the lady always needed. You're correct. Because Ketubah to Rabbanan. Husband has the advantage. Because Ketubah to Rabbanan. The ban Shimon Gamli Omen no tell about Kapotkia. He says, no. If the Hiyub is in Kapotkia, you pay Kapotkia. Why? Kasavar Ketubah de Oraita. And if it's the Oraita, you're obligated to pay the Ketubah from the bigger coins, which is Kapotkia. So that's basically the Mahlokan in the Mishnah. Is Ketubah de Oraita or the Rabbana. Therefore, you cannot be lenient on a Ketubah payment, and you have to follow the Torah that it all goes according to the place of the Shabbat. If it's the Rabbana, you can say, Rabbi's decided. Sometimes you'll go after the Shabbat, sometimes you'll go after the payment, depending on what's cheaper. But according to Shabbat Gamliel, since the Oraita that follows the, always the Shabbat. Tan Rabbana. Hamotzi Shtar Chob al Habero. Fine. A guy comes along and has a Shtar Chob against his friend. He puts a Shtar Chob against his friend. And what does it say in the Shtar Chob? Katubo Bavil. It says that the place where they obligated themselves was in Bavil. You got to use the money of Bavil then. The pay. Katubo Eretz Yisrael. Then everybody, Makbeu Memaot Eretz Yisrael. Katubo Setam. It doesn't say anything. It just says, it doesn't say the place. So what do you do in such a case? 
הוציאו בבבל, מגביאו במבוא בבבל. הוציאו בבבל ישראל, מגביאו במבוא ישראל. Depends where he takes the start out. If he presents the start in Babel, then you pay in Babel money. If he presents the start in Eris Yisrael, then it's presented in Eris Yisrael uh, money. Now, what's the, what's the logic over here? The, 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 the one logic is that the place where he took the start to get paid, Mistama, that's the place where the Shabud was. We assume that the place where he's coming to get paid is the place where the star was was made. And it was, since we follow where the Shabud was, <coughs> how do I know where the Shabud was when the star is vague? Ella, where the guy's coming to collect, we say that's the place where the Shabud was was made uh, initially. Let's say it says, I owe uh, Kesef. מאה כסף, but then say what type of כסף? יש סלעים, דינרים, פונדים, there's different type of coins. מה שירצה לווה מגבהו, whatever the לווה wants to pay, can pay. It didn't say, I, I can pay him in, in uh, quarters. Bitcoin. Bitcoins, exactly. Silver, silver bitcoins. מה שאין כאן בכתובה, וואו, but this does not apply to כתובה. מה זה מה שאין כאן בכתובה? אה, יא. We gave two laws in this פרייטה. Then you say, which law does not apply to Ketubah? Which means, you remember we said over here that um, if you write Stam in a Ketubah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Stam in a Shtarhov, we well, say wherever you're collecting it, but not by a Ketubah. No. Ketubah, we say Ketubah the Rabbanan, wherever mm -hmm. the cheaper is. So it's not based on oh. where you're collecting. But it's not like the Rabbanchim Gamliel, because he says, So he would say, you always go according to the more expensive of the of the place where the Shabud was. You pay whatever he wants. Maybe the fact that it didn't say Kesef, uh, maybe it means to pay even a, a, piece, a piece of silver, not a coin even. Uh, a silver... Uh, no, it just said matbeya kesef, but didn't say which type of coin. Maybe it means pennies, because there's also a small coin for perite. says, Okay, come on. People don't make uh, little coins like that out of silver. Now, if this guy happens to have them, uh, that clearly was not the intention. A person should always try to live in Eretz Yisrael. Even in a city that the majority are goyim. Wow. And don't live in Chutz La'aris. Even in the city that's Rob Yisrael. Whoever lives in Eretz Yisrael. Hey, he has a God. It's like he has a God. Whoever lives in Hosla'ares has bad news. I get a God. Shine'emar, as the Pasuk says, Vayikra, Latet lachem et eres kena'ar, Liyot lachem l'Elohim. Sounds like what? Where is Liyot lachem l'Elohim? Vechol she'en no dar ba'ares, En no Eloah. Now what time? We're sitting here learning that by Yomiyah. Nachon Hosla'ares. Man, no, en no Eloah. Wow, works. He made it worse. Yeah, 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 Next flight. And that's the Maharsha's question. Maharsha, tama matikim b'tirudze. The Gemara says, "Look, you know, no hashem shalom." Hey, look, you're over the Gabim. I'm sure he made it worse. So he says over here, So the Kimishinoelawa,ni as if they told me, go worship Abu Dazara. Who told David to go worship Abu Dazara? So what was David had to leave Israel. So he's saying, 
the cause me to leave Eretz Israel. It's as if they brought me to uh, Abu Dhabi. So he says, "Yeah, so he says." Now, what's the difference between the two, by the way? So you have to explain that. I think some, some explain that in in Eretz Israel it says Eretz Hashem Hashem Doresh Ota Tamid. All the other uh, the countries, they're run by Malachim. That's where the Shefa comes to the Malach. But through Eretz Israel, the Shefa comes direct. So therefore, when it says in Eretz Israel, which means he's getting the Shefa from, from the Malachim. From the Malachim. Uh, uh, but in Eretz Israel, you're getting it. Uh, 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 you're getting it uh, uh, direct, and therefore it's not the 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 hara is not the uh, is not the same. That's a strong uh, strong opinion over like it says in the pasuk. Exactly. It's his land and where his nation. Exactly. The land does not tolerate of the Abu Dazara and Megale Arayot. The Hutsara Aris, Abisha Kol Neshem and Nechbad, and Taraba Shirema. By which Eretz Israel has the bigger Tahara, because the land doesn't tolerate uh, uh, the of the Avera. But so therefore, uh, uh, it, it, the land will always purify itself. Hashem and Hutsara Aris, the land can tolerate it. So therefore, it's better to live in Eretz Israel because it's more. That's one. Uh, that's one way to do. It. Yeah, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see. Tomorrow's nap has actually a uh, a different opinion. We'll wait yeah. for tomorrow's nap. Baruch Hashem. Amen. Amen. Okay. Nap, huh? Wow. Not an easy nap. It's a mouthful, right here. Everybody okay there? I'm booking this thing. If you move to Israel and you're not Raoui, uh, you're not Raoui? Yeah. 